During the morning of March 13th, 1964, 20-year-old Kitty Genovese was violently murdered from across the street of where she lived. The New York Times published an article claiming that there were 37 witnesses to this crime and that none of them came to her aid or even called the police. You might be asking yourself, why? Why would anyone know that this woman needs help as such as to pass by? Well, psychologists explain this phenomenon as the bystander effect, which is basically a theory that states that we, as people, are less likely to help someone when there are other people around, because we tend to think that others will help instead of us. But even though this situation was scientifically explained, you might still be thinking it sounds crazy, right? And you might as well be saying to yourself, that wouldn't have happened to me. I wouldn't be tricked by the bystander effect. And I would have definitely helped that woman. Well, would you really? Then what's your excuse for not be helping your own community right now? I'm pretty sure you know that global warming is getting worse and worse and worse every year. I know that you know that there are children dying every day because of hunger. And don't even try to convince me that you never heard a racist, sexist, or homophobic comment and you didn't say a thing. So what do you think about all of these issues? That they will be just magically solved? That one day we will all wake up and realize that life is great because we're all aware of those issues, and that's enough, right? We all know that all people are equal, no matter of their race, gender, sexual orientation, or any other circumstance, and that's enough for the issues to be solved. Sadly, that's just the way most of the people think nowadays. And personally, I think that there's just one thing that's worse than ignorance, and it is being aware of an issue and pretend like it's not your problem. But don't worry, I'm not trying to make you feel guilty about it, even more. I must confess that once I was a bystander myself. I remember a couple of years ago, it was right before the Christmas holidays, and I went to the mall with my mom, and we wanted to buy presents for all of my family. And right in the middle of the mall, there was a group of volunteers that were spreading awareness about an event they were organizing to donate food and toys for children. And I remember passing by them at least five or six times, and I never stopped to ask, how could I help? So that same afternoon, I was sitting in my room, wrapping all of these presents, I couldn't help but feel bad about it. I was there, surrounded by presents, warm, at my house, just after eating dinner. But back there in the mall, I didn't even take two minutes of my time to ask who I, how could I help someone that really needs it. So it made me think that opportunities to help are always around us, but sometimes we're just not willing to see them. And that thought stayed in my head for a couple of days. And I realized that I wanted to change. I decided that I didn't want to be a bystander anymore. So I searched for local volunteering opportunities. And soon, I was making company to children who had family issues. I came to visit them at least once or twice a week. And my role was to talk to them and try to make them feel even if it was just for one moment, that all of these daily struggles will get better. There was something that happened to me that I will never forget. I was with a girl. 
She was about 11 years old at the time. And when it was time for me to leave, she hugged me and started to cry and control me. And she told me, I'm going to miss you so, so much. I wish someone in my family was like you. Thank you for making me feel that someone actually cares about me. I will never forget these words. And it might seem like I only helped a girl in Madrid and that it doesn't have any significance for the world. But that's not true. Since that day, I realized the importance of helping the ones around you. And I've been inspired to do so since then. By now, you might have realized the importance of taking action. But you might be asking yourself, what now? I know that I need to change, but what should I do now? So I will give you three useful tips on how you could stop being a bystander. So the first step, it's let's start on a small scale. So before leaving this room, I want you all to think about one thing that you could do this week to help others and make it something small. Maybe search your local volunteering opportunities. Maybe start recycling at home if you don't already do so. The second step would be to turn your plan into action. And start today, even if it's just a small step, but do it today. Don't wait until tomorrow. And the third step would be to set a long-term goal for yourself and make it something personal. For example, if you're into sports, try organizing a charity race at least once a month. If you like art, try selling your art and give that money to charity. If you're a student, tutor somebody that can't afford a, te a teacher. For change to become real, your contribution to the community needs to be continuous. And you're most likely to make it continuous if you're passionate not only about the cause, but also about the process. And the most important is not to think that your apparently small actions won't make any difference. Think about Rosa Parks. When she was told to give up her seat to a white man in a bus, she simply said, no, I'm not doing that. Seems like just a couple of words, right? But eventually, she became one of the most prominent figures in the civil rights movement. Unfortunately, I can't guarantee you that by taking action, you will change the world. But what I can guarantee you is that if you don't take action, the world will never change. Thank you.